Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, by the next update anyway, um, the the next up uh, next update, and I'm, I'm I'm going to regret saying this, but the next update <laughs> was slated to release tomorrow, or it was actually slated to release today, but we ended up saying we can push it tomorrow. So possibly tomorrow. Uh, it, it, it depends on a lot of factors right now. Hey all, today I bring on an absolute bittersweet video final postscriptum dev interview this interview was on december 22nd of 2022 prior to the recent news of postscriptum there's been no official announcement yet so i'm not going to go ahead and go into that aspect um however the general rumor is that periscope games um has gone ahead and dispersed uh, i wanted to go ahead and get this up prior to the holidays however due to time constraints it just wasn't possible for me I definitely wasn't anticipating the severity of the action taken and the uh, the situation. From the perspective of Mercury Arts, there is confirmed information, and that confirmed information is that at the time of this video, as well as the time of their post, the Rithymno map that we go over here and the Greek faction will not be fully released into Postscriptum as a third party. My heart absolutely goes out to those impacted in the recent events and uh, my community and I absolutely wish the best for those folks uh, and the two studios. I wanted to continue to come out with this interview regardless as it was an absolute humbling experience to speak with these fine gentlemen that have put so much heart and hard work into an amazing game. Uh, this is a little longer of a video than I normally do, but it has a lot of content. So I hope you stay tuned and enjoy. If you like this, Definitely go ahead and check out my live streams on Twitch. Link is in the bio at Razbora. Uh, huge, huge shout out to Cats and Snazzies for their time, uh, their expertise in getting with me. Thanks so much and enjoy. Welcome. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic, fantastic uh, day. I don't know what day today is. I lost track of the days. Um, it is Thursday, the 22nd of December. So hello. Um, those of you guys that may be used to the channel, clearly different faces. Those of you guys that uh, are brand new to the channel, welcome. It is a very, 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 very special stream today. Uh, we have the wonderful above me, Snazzy Duckling. Woo, Snazzy Duckling, hello. hi. And then hello, below hello. me, we have <laughs> Cats as well. Woo, Cats. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. So hello. Welcome, hello. Snazzy, Cats. Hello. Love you guys. So uh, let's go into introductions. So Snazzy, up top above me, who are you? Yes. What do you do? So, yeah, so I'm Snazzy, um, lesser known. Uh, my name is Henrik. I'm the community manager and producer, uh, or one of the producers of Periscope Games. So, you know, I deal with the community. I deal with all of our projects. Um, all the stuff that we really work on, both internally and with our uh, with our third parties like uh, like Mercury Arts, that's sort of like my deal. Um, so yeah, I I manage the community, manage all the social medias, uh, ensure that we get our dev blogs, ensure that people get the news, and you know make sure that our community is informed about what's going on within the dev team. Nice, thank you, Sandy nice. and Cats. Below me, who are you? So yeah, I'm Cats. I'm the project manager for the Chapter Mercury guys. Um, pretty much a bang average 3D artist who's uh, managed to get a very good team around me who's carried me through and carried the project through from there. So, um, yeah, dealing with mostly the project management side, some of the 3D models, some level design assistance uh, to our maestro. And uh, I chat with Snazzy on a daily basis and, and bend his ear and bore him uh, <laughs> more often than not, I think. So, yeah, that's me. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, I think uh, Postscriptum does things just very interesting. Uh, I play a lot of Hell Loose for the other guys that regularly follow me. Um, and I think uh, one of the most interesting things that Postscriptum does, and we kind of spoke a little bit about this last time, um, but how it kind of came to be, as well as how obviously Cats is able to go ahead and partner with Snazzy on a regular basis, which for Hella Loose, that's kind of unheard of where you know a third party studio goes ahead and partners up. So Snazzy, can you give us a little background like how postscriptum kind of came to be and then we can kind of talk about like the partnership which is super unique to postscriptum yeah i can um i can definitely answer this question it, it's one that's been asked multiple times before we've had to answer this question before um obviously the the start of 
uh, Periscope games and Postscriptum is a bit unorthodox from, from most indie studios, where most indie studios will either self-fund or they will um, kickstart their projects. So Periscope games and in turn Postscriptum actually originates as a, uh, as a, as a merge between two different um, squad, uh, squad and Project Reality mods. Um, so on the squad side, which I believe is where Romain, uh, our CEO, comes from, uh, was a project called Liberty's Highway, which was effectively a World War II game or a World War II mod made into squad via squad zone modding kit and squad zone modding integration. The rest of the team came on from um, another game that squad is actually based on called Project Reality. Um, and the people who used to work on Project Reality World War II merged with the people from Liberty's Highway to form uh, Postscriptum. Um, and Postscriptum sort of made a bit of a scene in the um, in the whole modding scene, with with it being uh, one of the most um, like progressively complete mods available. Um, so much so that at some point during 2016-17, Offworld Industries approached Periscope Games, or at the time didn't wasn't called that, but they approached uh, the Postscriptum developers and basically offered them to fund the development of it, a standalone project based on the uh, Autobrite core, which is uh, what we call the the Offworld. Um, version of Unreal Engine. So Unreal has a modified version of Unreal Engine 4 that it uses to power Squad, but it also uses it to power Postscriptum, Beyond the Wire, and more recently Starship Trooper, the, the, the new game that they're developing. Um, so the, the Odo by Core, the Unreal framework, basically allowed us to take a lot of, a lot of the, the things that already worked, like the, the voice over IP systems, the networking, the vehicle systems, all those things, were already done. And we took that and then ported it over to make basically our own stuff on top of that framework. And that's effectively how Postscriptum came to be. Obviously, like, uh, Postscriptum came from uh, the, the squad, basically, engine. So, Katz, how do you kind of fit into this? So, I guess, kind of, we almost <laughs> follow a pathway similar to Snazzy's uh, guys have, and that we are modding a mod of a mod. Um, so, um, yeah, so with the SDK coming out, um, we kind of got given a heads up that it was coming out, uh, around the time, maybe a month or so in advance. Um, because we, we basically decided that we wanted to do our own, um, aspect for Postscriptum as well. So having the interest as gamers, two of us started it off, um, with the desire to do a completely different theater from the Western front. So totally away from all the maps that are out there at the moment. Um, and that's kind of where, where it came in. The SDK gave us the opportunity. Um, but I think the idea came after Chapter 3, um, where we, we basically just wanted to do something totally different. And knowing the SDK was coming, which was on the roadmap at the time, gave us that opportunity. Um, and I guess when I say SDK, SDK is just Unreal Engine, a version of unreal engine which has in that the assets the uh, blueprints or the coding otherwise of postscriptum that allows us to effectively bolt in rather than make our own game um, which is is really useful to us and has allowed us to to do this really yep so it's just it's just really interesting how you both uh, obviously work for different companies right and so how, how does uh, Postscriptum or Periscope, right, partner with your company? Uh, and your company, correct me, it's uh, Mercury Arts, right? Yep, Mercury Arts. So we incorporated as a company earlier this year. Um, Congrats. Basically, it all started um, from the idea of doing this and pushing out as a mod. Um, Periscope Games, as I think we, we discussed options of actually getting it into the game. Um, given the scale of the mod, you know, it's not just a new map, it's whole new assets, new factions, new vehicles, new uh, blueprints. So we went as far as we kind of could within the SDK um, to include new models, new animations, new textures, new everything that we could really. Um, and all of this started with 
ironically, two of us who'd never done mod mod modding before, and uh, ended up pushing out um, out in this way. But given the scale of the mod, when we started showing off pictures and and started to show um, videos of what we were doing, the animations, I think we had a discussion, Snazzy, about that incorporation into the game, whether it would be technically possible or not. Periscope Games went away and did a bit technical research, and then uh, we kind of came to the discussion when we were playtesting as a mod um, as to how we would pull it in and how we would go about it. And I think that lasted a few months, and finally we kind of got round to getting it out in January, I think it was, Snazzy, I think. Uh, yeah, I believe that's on February, yeah. Yeah, so... It was uh, January. January, February. It's yeah. Yeah, and I think Periscope have said many times before they can't just take free assets into the game. You know that's that's not legal in, in right. the country that they're registered, um, and also I guess not ethical really when you think <laughs> it's, you spend two years on on stuff like this. And, and certainly Breeze and, and Snazzy appreci appreciate how much work has gone in. Um, you know, so we incorporated as a company to allow us to um, go company to company, if you like, in terms of uh, agreements and structures um, at the end of the day. Yeah, I guess I'll just quickly cover our side then. So um, for us, a third party was never really something we had initially considered. Um, a third party came about when, um, I think when, when, when Cash initially brought up, um, or when the community had brought up concerns about the ease of integration and the ease of modding. And mind you, we've already made the modding of Postscriptum um, as easy as we, as we can within within the limits and the constraints that we have. Um, so like Kat says, um, uh, the, the, the difference Postscriptum offers us rather than other, other games is that we have uh, the, the SDK, which is effectively a modding kit. It's our development tools accessible to the public with some caveats. There, there are certain things they do not have access to, uh, of course. They do not have the ability to uh, code their own um, code their own code from 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 scratch. There are limitations to what they can do, but it is effectively uh, the same editor that we work in as developers that they can use, and then they can take that content, put it on the workshop, and then we've got code on our side where anyone can basically download this content and use this content anywhere. Well, you mentioned obviously like because you're building off of an existing engine, there's definitely some benefits to it. So Snazzy, you're building off of one engine and Cats, you're building off of an engine off of an engine, right? So it's like crazy engine session here. So can you guys kind of explain uh, a little bit about like, what are some positive attributes about building off an existing engine? And then what are some of the pitfalls that you run into with it existing i assume that you're going to have the existing bugs right like whatever squad or whatever the other thing has and like how do you kind of go about overcoming it so um so i'll i'll, I'll take a first one and then yeah. then cast can, can move on and then talk about the modding specific scene because right. he has a lot more but uh for for us going from effectively a mod to a standalone project it, it causes uh, some concerns because, like cats, in the beginning, Postscriptum also did not have access to coding its own code. So we had to rely exclusively on what was available to us from the public, um, the public modding tools that Squad had given to us. And while that framework is good for creating a mod, um, it is not so good for then moving on to creating a standalone project using its own engine. There's a lot of um, the big problem we run into is that when Postscriptum was developed uh, as a standalone project, Squad was still in beta. Um, a beta means that they are still developing the engine, they're still developing the game, they're still adding stuff, they're, they're continuously working on it. And even to this day, they're still working on, on the little by core. But at the time when, when we developed Postscriptum, um, the engine was not as fully fleshed out as it is right. today. Um, it didn't have all the cool things that the squad has today. And so we sort of live with some of the shortcomings of uh, working with an in-development uh, in um, engine, basically. Um, and, and it has some pitfalls. It has some shortcomings. It has some benefits, don't get me wrong. Using Autogrow's existing frameworks means that we could push out a game 
much faster and much quicker than 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 you would traditionally. A game like this, uh, or Hell Loose for that matter, can easily spend four or five years in development. Easily. I feel like the time is a huge saver. So cats, now that uh Snazzy goes ahead and like messes up everything, all the code, right? And then <laughs> it goes to you. So how do you, just get, so how do you oh. go ahead and kind of handle, you know, the, those aspects, right? Because you get the <laughs> the other code, right? I, I won't lie, the uh, the engine up the engine upgrade was emotional, but I think it was emotional on both sides there, um, to be honest. Um, the the benefits for us is, I mean, as Snazzy said, you know, they get to, to work in a framework. Well, so do we. It's a framework on a framework, though. And, Same and study, you pass it to your coder. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're, we're very lucky that we've got um, people like Husky and, and, and Marcel and, and otherwise who can just make things work, yeah. um, you know. Um, but the reality is for us, if you look at a lot of assets in terms of uh, furniture, map furniture, you know, we're using stuff that's already been made by PG, not in the majority, but quite a lot of it. That saves us time, you know. Some of the vehicles um, have been taken from vanilla as well or retextured. So that, again, saves us time. It's not a model we have to do, a model we have to rig. Um, so it's almost, as Snazzy says, they're building off one game, we're building off another. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is benefits and, and downfalls to that because whatever snazzy has with the benefit of getting from squad and the restrictions from squad well we get again the benefits from postscriptum but then the restrictions of squad and postscriptum and the um c++ not being exposed to us so right um, we're working within a tighter framework perhaps but we're a lot freer in that we're not having to concern ourselves too much with that we can just use what's in there and bringing our own assets as well so it's it's a good framework for us to work with really how so yeah. snazzy mentioned like uh something that would take four to five years is taking way less time obviously because you have the the framework built so cats like with the with the maps uh, you and your team have developed i mean what would be like the normal time frame say you would have to build it versus like the time frame you guys are able to go ahead and do it with the code you're already provided well, I, I think it's a uh, we're we're building off an existing game. Uh, all the yeah. blueprints are there for weapons, all of, you know for vehicles and otherwise. We're using frameworks that are already in place. So for us, it's it's not much of a comparison to push out a right. entire game as Snazzy That's says fair. is four years. For us to make a new faction in the Greeks, it took us six months. Um, wow. For a map, a good map, around five six months. Um, so yeah, Malame took a bit longer because we were finding our feet, but Rathemno has been very quick since about February is when we started, and I think we were ready for release around the end of October time, roughly, I think. So yeah, there yeah. You go. Benny asks the question: When will Rathemno be incorporated into Postscript- Postscriptum? We are, I guess, Snazzy can answer that. <laughs> Well, uh, Refimno is, is, is as far as uh, as Mercury goes. Refimno is ready to go. Um, they they are really just waiting for us, and we are sort of delaying them. Um, not 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 on purpose, of course, but uh, <laughs> we are we are unfortunately the reason why they are delayed. Uh, otherwise, we, it would have been. We forgive you. We uh, forgive you. <laughs> I hope you will. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, by the next update, anyway. Um, the the next app or, uh, next update, and I'm 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 going to regret saying this, but the next update was <laughs> slated to release tomorrow, or it was actually slated to release today, but we ended up saying we can push it tomorrow. So possibly tomorrow. Uh, it, it it depends on a lot of factors right now because we are like terrifyingly close to the holiday, um, yeah. and we usually have this one rule that says we do not patch up uh, up close to like a holiday. Because the last thing you want is for pa- is to patch something on the day before Christmas, it's and then jacked. Christmas, someone <laughs> someone is gonna have to go and fix something. Yeah. What could um, go wrong? What could go wrong? So this is our second map. Uh, this is Rathemno. So after the first one being Malame, so another uh, arena on the Battle of Crete. Um, this is an area of four kilometers by four kilometers, um, and it features land fought over 
in the period by the German Fallschirmjäger, alongside Greek uh, Grand Arms, the Crete division that was reconstituting on Crete at the time, as well as uh, the Australian battalions as well. Um, so a huge map. Um, we've applied through war diaries. We've gone through uh, various um, maps. Of, of We even managed to get one from our um, historian of an accurate map, of, I believe, of the invasion maps that the Foschenjäger carried, or potentially it was the other way around, maybe the um, Australians had. But you'll see it's quite a wide variety of um, land to fight over. Uh, I think you were there for the playtest, but we've got from bunker complexes, uh, we've got a um, huge tunnel complex under the map as well itself, yes. uh, reflects yes. reliance on all the caves. Um, if you go a bit lower, uh, you should be able to get a bit better right. impression of uh, there we go. hopefully the quality of the map itself yeah, as well. Yeah, no, sorry. Like, <laughs> Pretty high all up. All right. <laughs> Just a lot in oh, the ground. Oh, God. But, uh, yeah. Oh, we're going Getting through. Getting used to the admin cam here. <laughs> you fell through. But yeah, feel free to have a spin around. You'll see there's a huge airfield as one of the, one of the dominating factors. And that was obviously what they were fighting over um, in the period for um, control of the airfields to bring in the reinforcements. There he is. Uh, that's an Ames Tower. So one of the early radars was actually deployed to Crete. Um, actually, I believe it was a Malame. But we moved it um, just to keep it in there, but also uh, to add a new point of interest alongside where the bunker complexes were. Uh, there's one of our Greek soldiers. So brand new player model, brand new uh, weaponry. Uh, everything you're seeing on him is made by us. Um, all the animations, etc., all brought in by our animator as well. Um, so an entire new faction in six months or so is is pretty impressive, I think, even on professional terms. I hope, Snazzy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we really worked out to push that out. But if you span across the uh, runway, feel free. Uh, you know, people were saying about lived-in um, buildings, so feel free to pick any building um, that you might come across, I think, and just go into them. You'll be able to see how lived-in we've tried to make them. Uh, as well, so uh, just small little aspects uh, where we try to tell a story when we uh, build our levels as well. So you know, having the uh, mess hall, having the maintainers' huts, um, so things of that nature. We actually had a uh, RAF maintainer actually made the maintainers' hut, so you can't oh, yeah? get much more accurate than that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of the models have been based around pictures that we've got of the island as well, such as like the uh, control towers as well. But you should notice that pretty much no building is the same inside because of the amount of love and affection that's gone into um, pushing this this together. Um, the signs, I believe, even point you in the right directions for supplies, for the med center, for that kind of stuff across the island. So yeah, that is incredible. Uh, I, I remember during the playtest, I did check a little bit of this out. And I mean, it's just the level of detail is very, very nice. Yeah. So you'll see it's a, it's a lot of brand new models, even all this camouflage kind of thing put together by uh, Luminous, one of our 3D modelers. Uh, all the ammo boxes, I believe uh, I might have done them. Uh, the models of the um, Nissan hoods themselves, they're done by Maguire. Um so yeah, you you can get a feel for the place. We wanted to do, it to feel like somewhere totally different, not just another map with the same buildings on. We wanted it to be entirely different. You might spot an Easter egg in there as well on the table. Um, I think the center table might have the picture of the entire mod team on. Oh, oh no that's, French. That's, that's a PS one, but there you go. So, oh, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> no, 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 that, that's one of our three D modelers and his uh, his wife. <laughs> that's awesome where's so, the yeah. uh where's the other picture did you have another picture or? spot oh all sorts spotted around the uh the place oh, nice. um yeah so we tried to give it a bit of a feel as if you know someone's reading his reports having his cup of tea while he's uh going through his letters you know everything down to the small detail we've we've tried to put in there um but if you want to take a large view out uh, i think even the the uh, med center's got a a cut up leg in a bucket or something like that you know we've Jeez. 
try to add a little bit here and there. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it looks incredible. I mean, it, uh, again, the level of detail. Oh, yeah, definitely sure. a field in. Oh, there another is. picture there. There we go on the right. There you go on the table. <laughs> That's so, great. There, there's a few of the developers we met up for a barbecue. So there's a few little Easter eggs of things that are special to us um, that we've placed around. So um, yeah, My I, I, won't, I won't say them all because people can enjoy looking for them. But feel That's free great. to have a have a wider view up um if you want to go towards the um yeah let's uh, check out uh, monastery the monastery yes. is quite a good point of interest where's that monastery it's the aircraft on there as well which yeah. reflect the units that were there including the uh color markings with them no it actually been evacuated of aircraft at the time uh, but we decided to put them on um just as it's extra cover it still tells the story uh, those were the units that were based there. So, you know, um, even if they had evacuated at the time, a lot of their ground crews fought on against the Polshemjäger as well. So, um, yeah, Brewster Buffaloes, yeah. But yeah, and then you've got some Fairy Fulmers, I think, on the airfield as well and other places. Uh, the control tower is modelled off the control tower that was at Malame, based on the pictures that we had. Uh, so, yeah, there's some Fairy Fulmers kind of thing covered up. That is awesome yeah i mean the the assets in this are incredible look great so i think we stole that off the uh messerschmitt <laughs> the, <laughs> the, co the covering is stolen off the messerschmitt but the uh the plane itself was a former a, a little quarry kind of thing so we didn't have an exact position of this um but that was in one of the war diaries that one of our researchers was reading through about uh the quarry where they were fighting as well so we've tried to do a uh That's irrelevant incredible aspect there um just again it's another unique kind of point of interest that isn't already in the game that we've wanted to kind of throw in there really so there you go you can go in via there there's different routes up i think there's three different entryways into the wine cellar um oh, wow, to yeah. pop out at different points the cap zone i believe is within the cellar as well so you've got to kind of go down there flush people out or you know you can invade via there via different routes um so yeah that so is I'm really sure neat you know, uh, yeah and there's literally like this crawl space here that you can get in yeah so if you can grenade in there she's blocked off there's still roots in and around in around so the that little white awesome. is uh it's is an absolute priority thing <laughs> yeah i, I think I it was really brought like into my addiction to wine but yeah <laughs> yeah i know he uh, I, I i met cats today he's like oh yes fancy day we're having i was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> just having a uh a, a, a fancy wine today yeah this, this yeah, is yeah, great fighting here <laughs> he's like sloshing it a wine connoisseur yeah um, so yeah, yeah incredible man absolutely incredible i mean the monastery itself looks beautiful yeah, I mean, uh, I'll see if I can find a actual picture of the monastery that gives you a. Oh, that'd be great. Um, uh, it's like begins with Arcadi. That's the one. That's Def uh, Arcads. Yeah, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam's like, yep, that's that's him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do I do? Did this? I did I, I find your you? did I find your dogs? I think I found your dogs. Yeah, it was a clock. <laughs> oh my, my goodness. Go. Those things are adorable. There you go. So, so you found my dogs now. I still haven't found the Easter egg cost mm, we put in here. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've put it in on the initial release, but we are going to put in a duck hunt. Um, so in one of the areas, you'll have to find certain ducks, and when you action them, or the, whether you kill them or otherwise, then uh, it's at that point that you've got to uh, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Let me, uh, show nice, nice, nice picture. <laughs> both real quick. There you go. So this is going to be the comparison here. So this is the uh, monastery in game. I mean, it's incredible. Who modeled this? Uh, I modeled the monastery. Uh, Dang. But Gunslinger, Gunslinger put it all all together, kind of thing. But all That's the buildings the actual... around there. Monastery there on screen right now, and that is beautiful. Yeah, that is crazy. The difference. Look at that. So even on the left, you can kind of see the pillars with the wooden slats, and we've done that in game as well. So, um, yeah, 
we've tried to oh. make it quite accurate for that. The front yeah. building as well is accurate to the right one there as well. So we, we have worked hard to, to put in those kind of unique aspects, really. Yeah, that is beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. Why'd you put my boss in here? <laughs> Breeze. Yeah, Breeze is in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the the CEO of uh, Persco Games is is oh, in there no somewhere. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I saw him in uh, the other map. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's very fun. I did, this is beautiful. So I think this is very unique. That I don't think any other postscript map really has this in depth of uh, a, tr a system of the ground case. Yeah. yeah. So it goes all the way through there. So let's go ahead and follow one of the paths. I mean, it just goes straight under this mountain. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The idea was as well, because the mountain has got strong sight lines. Um, yeah. The idea huge. was you could kind of pop up behind the enemy. So they might think you're on one side, but then you can get around to the other without them even noticing. But there Lovely. you can see sort of like the uh, the entrance ways to one of the tunnels hidden away. Wow, yeah. Beautiful here. So I, I just... Go. I can't wait to play this map and just see some of the uh, the gameplay through this. As well, obviously, we're not just dropping this map. Um, we've got an entire faction as well coming in with new rifles. I think there's four different types of new rifle, uh, two different variants in that. Yeah. Um, Can we see some of the, uh, some of the guns? Do you have new armor as well? Uh, not from Malame, but Malame did feature the Vickers tank. Um, the Germans will get a tank in this, which is a Panzer II. They actually took two Panzer IIs over to the island on um, pretty much a barge kind of thing. Really? They blew the bow off the barge, yeah. Oh, so, wow. uh, yeah, there you go. So that's your Spicy. new rifle. Go for it. Models look there good, too. Very good. Is there like a... Yep. I don't know in postcard again, I'm, I'm still super new. Is there like an inspect feature on your gun or no? No. So so the models were actually made by a uh, professional 3D modeler who was so kind as to to offer his services to us. Uh, a guy called Red Rogue who did all the weapons, I believe, for Beyond the Wire. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I don't know if he's done many for Squad as well, actually. Um, but yeah, lo lovely chap who, uh, who came and, and offered our assistance. Uh, animations done by Umbob. Uh, Chester, who worked also on the Star Wars mod um, for uh, oh. Squad. Yeah, yeah, Galactic Conquest. Yeah, I played that. really Great. good mod. Um, and the textures of this were done by Luminous, I believe, who's a very good 3D modeler as well. He's yeah, I mean, these are some really high res uh, assets here. The and they're all they're all done. As you can see, there's the Greek cross on there. They're all done to be yeah. uh, historical as well so so that's cool how do i yeah, uh, so change the gun here so let's check you out. have all the others i they are unfortunately in greek okay <laughs> yeah sorry about that but you can no, see the no, weapon good the so... mp34 is already in game but you can see uh Chow Chow's already in game let's see which one has got the graz there is a recruit which has a Graz, which is one of my favorite weapons because it's single shot all this action. Here. No, dude, no, no. <laughs> I mean, this is the anti climax when you realize it's single shot ball action and you're like, oh, yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they actually fought with these. Uh, black powder as well, so. Kind of, uh, oh, dude, it's even off a shot? lot of. Smoke. What? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, that's awesome. And then you've got to press R. Yeah, and there you go. Time. Wow, that is really neat. But that's um, what they had. So we've we've tried to give them exactly what they had, um, in terms of all the kits. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this I'm gonna gives have to me, shoot uh... off Sorry oh, about yeah, that. Oh yeah, no worries. No, 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 you're fine. Um, this <laughs> gives me a uh... man. Battlefield One had a rifle just like this. That was a one shot. I can't remember exactly what it was. It is really cool. Uh, we actually had to rework the mortar system to to get that to play. Um, really. So yeah. So there you go. Those are sweet. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Uh, so they actually do they just have a set amount of ammo? Is that how they work? Or? Yeah, they've got, smoke they've got They've got AG, yeah. But that's an Italian mortar that the Greeks used quite in widespread, uh, which was captured usually on the um, 
on the front that they were fighting with off Albania. Really? Yeah. That's so quite they, interesting. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool weapon. Um, I'm really sorry that I can't stay much longer tonight. It's my first day back home for the you holidays. Are totally fine. <laughs> so I've got their uh, family around and otherwise. But um, thank you so much for, for showing this off for us. I hope Snazzy will be able to go off Colmar and, and chat through a bit more of the stuff that we've got there. Um, but yeah, any questions people have, please throw them on our Discord for Mercury, and hopefully we'll be able to, to help and go through them then. Check so, out apologies. Chapter Mercury <laughs> potentially tomorrow or when they come back from holiday. Yes. Yeah, whenever whenever we can. Awesome. Cats, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, buddy. No worries. Out to you. Take care, guys. Cheers. Have a good one, Cats. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too, dude. Yes, Merry Christmas.